There was a lot of shit along the way. 20, 30, 40 years ago, people would build companies for legacy. I shouldn't say this, but it's probably like childbirth. There was a lot of sleepless nights. It's very easy to get blinded by dollar signs. I would never sell my company to private equity again. It's like, what the fuck is this? It's not a company, it's just a money pit. It's like the best moment of your life, your career, but it's also incredibly, intensely stressful and difficult. To a founder who is planning their exit, what advice would you give them? Hello, and welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. This week, I revisit my conversation with the co-founder of Feel Unique, Aaron Chatterley. Aaron tells me about how he grew Feel Unique to be the largest online beauty retailer in Europe, how he sold the business to Sephora, and whether he would work with private equity again. If you're a founder planning your exit or thinking about whether you should sell to private equity, then this episode may be just for you. Please like, follow, and subscribe to the show. I kick off by asking Aaron what it was like selling Feel Unique to Sephora. We sold to LVMH Sephora mm -hmm. um, in September 21. And then I stepped down in July last year. Mm. That's a journey and a half. <laughs> yeah, and there was a lot of shit along the way. Can mm. I say that on podcast? That's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there was a lot of shit along the way. And, you know, it was the private equity years were difficult. You know, it's, it was a challenging time. But the only thing that matters is we started a business 16 years ago with £70,000, never raised the money, never raised any money, sold it 17 years later for £132 million to Sephora. I did not get £132 million or even half of that. Um, but the, that's the kind of narrative that matters, really. Mm -hmm. Um, everything else that happened and it's kind of, I, I, I can, I shouldn't say this, but it's probably like childbirth. Do you know what? You start there, you've got a whole load of stuff to go through. It's awful, a lot of it, but what matters is what pops out the other end. And that's really the takeaway for us is, mm -hmm. you know, it's an incredible journey. Was it the right decision to bring in the private equity and to sell to private equity? Um, I am always like a left and right path thinker. Um... There's no right and wrong path, I don't think. You know, you will never know if we hadn't done that. I, my belief is that if we hadn't done that, we, we could have carried on without doing anything for several more years because those threats that we perceived didn't really come in a significant enough way that would have put us out of business. So arguably, we, I think we might have made some different decisions, which I think may have been better, um, about how we run the business and how we grew the business and we wouldn't have lost you know, a chunk of equity. So my head says, my heart says, we probably could have done better without it. But my head, which is very like left and right, I don't think it's a, left, I don't think it's a right and wrong path, mm -hmm. says if we had gone down that path, who knows what else might have happened? Something may have happened that may have negated all sorts of things, and we could have ended up worse. Mm -hmm. So, don't, it, it, it was great, you know. We, the the outcome, the final outcome, was fantastic. And mm -hmm. you know, yeah, maybe it would have been better if we hadn't. But I honestly don't know. I what I do know is that I would never sell part of my company to private equity again. Mm. Why not? Um, because I think I don't. Th I don't think we'd need to. I think you've really got to understand the challenges that they bring, you know, um, and don't get me wrong, there are some amazing PE fans out there. But for me, I would rather be part of the earlier journey. I would rather build, build the business up, perhaps with venture funding, and take it to a point either where we do a trade exit um, or we would potentially IPO it. But for me, I think really building a business up to the point where I think much more, it's, it would be much more exciting to build a business up to a point where an, an LVMH or uh, an Estee Lauder is going to buy it because you've created it from day one to there. Um, whereas once you bring in private equity, it goes through that whole kind of growth funding thing. Um, there's a lot of risks as a, for a founder going through that. 
because you know they have various structures around how they provide the funding and, and capital structures and um which I, I just don't think we would need to go down that route. I think I think we kind of underestimated our own ability to 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 build a business to the extent that we did. And I think a lot of founders kind of can often do that. Mm. What are you talking about? I do about? know some amazing success stories mm. with private equity, and I know some companies that you know, friends of mine that have done super well and loved it. Mm. Um, but for me, it's just just not for me. Earlier. When we started talking, you're saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm unemployable and I'd never want to work for anyone. Did it feel like there was a boss at that point? No, and maybe that's part of the problem. In that maybe they felt like the boss. Mm. Um, which is fine if those individuals had huge amounts of experience in the sector or in retail or in e-commerce, but they tended to be kind of ex-Bain McKinsey management consultant, Stanford maths graduates and um, super capable, super smart, super smart and very often nice people, but mm -hmm. just culturally, I don't think they ever really understood the importance of the DNA and the culture and the relationships that the business was founded on. I think very often private equity can get a bit too deep in the weeds without really understanding the impact of some of the decisions. Mm. So looking back and having the experience that you've had, giving advice to a founder who is planning their exit, what advice would you give them? Oh, um, It's really difficult because every single scenario is very, very different. I think you need to have a very clear objective in mind and you need to have a very clear objective about what you want after the transaction, especially if you are going through a partial sale or a private equity deal. Do you want to stay on? Can you stay on? You know, very often, even and I'm a big fan of venture, very often they are amazing at showing you a lot of love during the process. Um, because it's their job. If they don't get you over the line, they don't have an acquisition. Um, so you need to really understand, really get to know them properly. Speak to portfolio companies, businesses they've invested in before, businesses they brought or sold before, but don't just speak to the ones that they give you. Find out others. Because if by definition, if they give you a reference, much the same with um, candidates too. So I, so I think it's, yeah, I think it's super important that you really understand the people that you're going to be working with as best you can. And I know it's not possible to, you know, there's, there will always be surprises, but I think that's super important, especially if you're going to stay involved. Uh, and then I, th I think, in, 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 and then, you know, in terms of, of an exit, it's very easy to get blinded by dollar signs. Um, and it's not always about the biggest number because, you know, you need to make sure that the acquirer can complete you know and even the biggest organizations may not be in a financial position to ultimately complete depending on the size of the transaction so you need to you know but again you know anybody going through that will have appointed you know lawyers and accountants and a whole bunch of other consultants to see, to see through the process um and also enjoy the process because it's always going to go on longer than you think it's fucking stressful you know, it's like the best moment of your life, your career, period. But it's also incredibly, intensely stressful and difficult because it's not going to be six weeks. It's going to be six to nine months, generally, if it's a reasonable size transaction. There are going to be many moments during that process where it's over and they're walking away or you're walking away <laughs> or something's come up that changes the price or changes the dynamics. You know, there's a lot, there was a lot of sleepless nights. Um, yeah. Should every, it. should every founder think about and plan an exit strategy from the beginning? No. I think that's the first thing you need to think about is do you actually want to exit it? If you've got a business that's doing well and really your businesses should be doing well, you know, I'm, 
kind of super cautious about businesses that are on an endless cycle of funding rounds. Oh, you know, we're gonna, this is our seed and we're going to be raising three million. Then we're going to do a, then we're going to do a seed round. It's going to be X, and then we're going to need to do a, a Series A, and that's going to be five million. And and then in three years we're doing our Series B, and we're going to need fifty million then, and then we're going to raise a hundred million. It's like, what the fuck is this? It's not a company. It's just a, it's just a money pit. Um, so I'm always a little bit cautious about businesses that don't have an ultimate goal of making money. And, and, and if your business goal ultimately is to create a company, which is primary objective is at some point to make money. Um, if it's making money and it's doing well and it's growing and you know, really think about, do you actually want to sell it? Is that your goal? Because this is relatively new thinking. 20, 30, 40 years ago, people would build companies for legacy. You know, maybe it's, you don't, you don't have to run it, but maybe you can get to the point where you put in a chief exec and you sit on the board and you take a huge dividend every year. That's not a terrible outcome. Um, maybe it's something your kids can go on to run. Maybe it's something you want to build up over time. You know, historically businesses were, were legacy, legacy institutions often. So I'm not, I'm not obsessed about the kind of the exit. I think you need to think about if it's what you really want. And don't get me wrong, it's what we wanted. Um, it's not a bad thing, but I think you need, I don't think it, I don't think it's the only way. That was Aaron Chatterley, co-founder of Feel Unique. I'm your host, Maria Vorostovsky, and I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe or follow button, and I'll see you next week.